for me to have gone through all that I went through and to come out and achieve the success that I have achieved, I think is a remarkable story. It, it, in my mind, I've, I've always said, I don't know why I couldn't have been on Johnny Carson just for the mere fact that I spent 20 years in prison, was on death row and got out and became a singer songwriter. I grew up in a, in a, uh, a family. My father was a Mormon. My mother was Pennsylvania Dutch Amish. It was a lot of strange beliefs. My grandfather used to say, you can't go to heaven if you drink hot liquids. You can't go to heaven if you drink hot liquids. One day I woke up and I said, what the fuck does God care if I drink hot liquids? That don't even make no sense to me. I'm going to drink coffee. I want to take a drink. I want to see what this coffee thing's about. So I started drinking coffee. When I was 58 years old, it took me that long to reconcile in my mind that God didn't give a fuck if I drank hot liquids. But my father was an alcoholic. My father was a guy that, that, that beat my mother, ran her head through the wall. Back in, when, in the 50s, when that was a way of life. Men beat their wives, they beat their kids. I mean, that was just a way of life. And I know, you know, I talk to my son about that now, and he just can't imagine. Because now, if you go to hit, wait, wait a minute, I'll call 911, motherfucker. You ain't hitting me. <laughs> you know what I mean? When I was nine years old, I was placed in institutions. And uh, for the, the biggest part of my life from that point on, I was institutions in institutions. And uh, being in institutions uh, at that young age, I had to be very tough. Uh, a lot of people are always saying to me, smile. I said, I don't smile. You know? It ain't what I do. You know? I just uh, grew up being abused uh, by guards, by, by the penal system in general. And uh, the only way that I found to keep from losing my mind, because I had all these other feelings as a young boy, you know? I mean, there's nothing I would have loved better than to say to the guy in the cell of me, hey, man, how about coming down and just sitting beside me? I'd just like to feel another person's body close to mine. But if I did that, all of a sudden he's going to think, hey, you know, we got something going on here, you know? So you got to keep those feelings inside of you, okay? Well, what I did to release those feelings was I wrote. I wrote, you know? And I never let nobody see that side of me, you know? It was, oh, I was the, if, if you would have went to the Ohio State Penitentiary in the 1960s, and when you first went into prison, they would have showed you three guys, three inmates. They would have showed you our pictures. I was one of those inmates. The first day you were there, and they would say to you, look at these three men. Remember their faces. If you see them in this prison, do not talk to them. Do not have anything to do with them. Stay as far away from them as you can stay, because they will kill you if you look at them wrong. I was uh, considered to be one of the hardcore criminals of the penal system. I had stabbed three or four people, hit people over the head with baseball bats, took one guy and shoved his head in a pot of hot chili. I mean, uh, I spit on the warden. I mean, I was an incorrigible, angry young man. And yet, back at my cell at night, I was writing things like, would you lay with me in a field of stone? And, and great, you know, uh, sentimental uh, words that later, after I got out of prison, I had five or 6,000 things that I'd written while I was in prison. 
you know, on paper. And then I could look at them objectively and write about that. You know, people are always asking me uh, if things would have been different if I hadn't been in prison. Well, you know, how can I answer that? Because I was in prison and it's the only thing I know. Sometimes. <laughs> I mean, just a minute, so everybody's just feeling it.